Hello everyone and welcome. Welcome to this concert. My name is Laz and I'm one of the twin brothers in the folk music duo Gemini. When my brother and I put this show together, we couldn't get together in one place because of the stay-at-home order, so we put it together from our two homes. So the way it will work is, I'll sing a couple of songs, then my brother Sam, along with his daughter Emily, will sing a couple songs, and we'll keep alternating like that. So I'll start it off with a greeting song, an echo song, in which I'll sing a word, and you can echo it back. some of the instruments that we'll be playing during the show, but I didn't mention my favorite instrument, which is my voice. It's great if you play guitar or any other instrument, but you don't have to in order to make music. I'll show you. I'll put the guitar down and teach you a song that only has four words. The four words come from a country in West Africa called Ghana, and the words are 
Fanga, can you say that back? Fanga. Alafia, Alafia. Ashe, 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 Ashe. And those words mean, I welcome you into my heart. Can you say that back? I welcome you into my heart. And then you can sing it like this. Fanga alafia, ashe, ashe. Fanga alafia, ashe, ashe. Try that. Fanga alafia, ashe, ashe. Fanga alafia, ashe, ashe. I welcome you into, into my heart. 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 In Spanish, it sounds like this. Bienvenidos a mi corazón. Bienvenidos a mi corazón. Try that. Bienvenidos a mi corazón. Bienvenidos a mi corazón. And you can add hand motions like this. Fanga a la fia, ashe, ashe. 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 I welcome you into, into my heart. 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 Into my heart, into my heart, into my heart. Very good. Hello, everybody. My name is San. My name is Emily. And uh, we are very happy to be here with you and playing music for you. Uh, we're going to start off with a song called The Marvelous Toy by Tom Paxton. When I was just a wee little lad and full of health and joy, my father homeward came one night and gave to me a toy. A oh, wonder to behold it was with many colors bright. And the moment I laid eyes on it, it became my heart's delight. It went zip when it moved and bop when it stopped and wonder when it stood still. I never knew just what it was and I guess I never will. Want to try that with us? It went zip when it moved and bop when it stopped and wonder when it stood still. I never knew just what it was and I guess I never Big surprise, for right on its bottom were great big buttons that looked like great big eyes. I first pushed one, and then the other, and then I twisted its lid. And when I set it down again, here's what it did. It went zip when it moved and bump when it stopped and whirled when it stood still. I never knew just what it was, and I guess I never right and then marched under a chair and when I looked where it had gone it wasn't over there I started to cry but my daddy laughed but he knew that I would find when I turned around my marvelous toy chugging from behind it went sick when it moved and broke when it stopped and went when it stood still I never knew just what it was and I
popped right out of his head And he gave a squeal of glee Whee! Neither one of us knows just what it is But he loves it just like me It still goes zip When it moves and bop When it stops and wait When it stays still I never knew just what it was And I guess I never will It still goes zip When it moves and bop When it stops and wait When it stands still I never knew just what it was And I guess I never will This next song is one that was written by a woman named Rosalie Sorrells. And Rosalie uh, was a mom and uh, she had several children. And one day, Rosalie was up on a ladder trying to change a light bulb. And her kids were running around the ladder and uh, shaking the ladder and tattling on each other. They would say things like, Johnny hit me and Mary threw the bat and, you know, various things like that. So she got off the ladder and started singing back to them what she heard them say. It went like this. I'm gonna tell. Just to sort of get out of cleaning your room. When mom finds this out, she'll sweep the room up with you. Cause I'm gonna tell on you. Sing it with us. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna holler. And I'm gonna yell. And I'll get you in trouble for everything you do. Cause I'm gonna tell. Bananas, you ate. I'm going to about the cat and the balloon. I'm going to tell on you. I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell. I'm going to holler and I'm going to yell. And I'll get you in trouble for everything you do. Because I'm going to Once upon a time, there was a young girl who had a dream. And in the dream, an angel came to her and said, Would you like to see the most beautiful place on earth? She said, Sure. The angel said, There is a catch. First, I have to show you the ugliest place on earth. Why would I want to see that? She said. Well, said the angel, Sometimes you have to see the ugly in order to appreciate the beauty. Okay, she said. So the angel said, close your eyes, I'll snap my fingers, and when you open your eyes, you'll be in the ugliest place on earth. She closed her eyes. The angel snapped his fingers, and when she opened her eyes, she was in this huge hall. It had beautiful chandeliers on the ceiling. It had tapestries and pictures on all the walls. And in the middle of the room was a huge table filled to overflowing with delicious food. Think of your favorite foods. They were there. 
Think of all your favorite foods. They were all there. And sitting around the table were people dressed in beautiful clothes. And there was even a musician playing music for them. But when the little girl looked at the people, they all looked miserable. She said, Angel, in this beautiful place with all this delicious food, why are they looking so glum? And the angel said, look closely. And when she did, she saw that every person had a long spoon. And when they were trying to feed themselves, they would end up throwing it behind them, end up throwing it over their shoulder, over the other shoulder. They couldn't get the food to their mouths. She said, Angel, no wonder they look so miserable. They're starving. And the angel said, that's right. But enough of that. Let's go now to the most beautiful place on earth. Close your eyes. I'll snap my fingers. And when you open your eyes, you'll be in the most beautiful place. She closed her eyes. The angel snapped his fingers. And when she opened her eyes, it looked exactly the same. The same large room with the chandeliers, the tapestries, the pictures, the same table with the same delicious food, the same people sitting around the table in their beautiful clothes, the same musician playing the same tune. She said, Angel, this looks like the same place. The angel said, Look closely. And when she did, she saw that even though they had the same long spoons, they were feeding each other. They were extending the spoons to each other across the table, to the left of them, to the right of them, and everybody was able to be fed. And the angel said, that's the only difference between the ugliest place on earth and the most beautiful place. And the most beautiful place People feed each other. They take care of each other. And that's the end of the story. Before I do this next song, I want to ask you three questions. Did any of you plant a garden last summer? I'm sure many of you did. Did anybody plant pumpkin seeds? I'm sure some of you did. Did anybody get from those pumpkin seeds Watermelons. Nope. Doesn't work that way. What you plant in the ground, that's what comes up. And that's what this song is about. And I'll teach it to you one phrase at a time and you can echo it back. It goes like this. I will plant seeds of joy in my heart each day. Sing that back. I will plant seeds of joy in my heart each day Water them, care for them, and watch them grow In my heart each day Try that Water them, care for them, and watch them grow In my heart each day And one more phrase In my heart, seeds of joy In my heart, see.
joy growing every day. And one more seeds of love. I will plant seeds of love in my heart each day. Water them, care for them. Here's a song called Best Friends, and while I sing this song, I think of my good buddies, and you can do the same thing. Think of your good friends, and you can sing it with us, and Emily will show us the American Sign Language. You ready? Mm -hmm. Best friends, always together. This one, on this one, you can jump along with us, and uh, Emmy will uh, give you guidance about what motions and actions to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, and she's also going to play the fiddle. Yes. You got. Uh, here's the key. This is the key. You gotta sing when the spirit says sing. You gotta sing when the spirit says sing. When the spirit says sing, you gotta sing right along. You gotta sing. Oh, you gotta wait when the spirit says clap. Oh, you gotta wait when the spirit says clap. Uh-huh. You gotta wait. 
is a penny whistle. It's got six holes on the front, and if you cover all of them, you get your lowest note. As you lift your fingers one at a time, you go higher and higher. And if you blow a little harder, and you can play tunes on it like this. This is a slide whistle. It's called that because it's a whistle that slides. So there's all kinds of up, down, high, low games you can play with it, but you can actually play tunes on it. I'm going to play you one I'm sure you know. As soon as you recognize it, start singing along. So we've got some fun instruments here. These are called fiddlesticks, and it's a traditional way of playing fiddle tunes in the Appalachian Mountains where somebody would take a couple of knitting needles or darning needles and tap out a rhythm on the bottom strings of the fiddle while the fiddler plays the tune. I've just got a, piece, a couple of pieces of, uh, of wood here, little dowels, and this requires enormous talent, so watch carefully. No, don't try this at home. <laughs> here we go.
And now we've got another pair of instruments. These are called the bones. And I've been playing the bones for a very long time. I met a gentleman named Percy Danforth here in Ann Arbor in 1975. Percy was 75 years old then. And uh, he taught me how to play these bones. Uh, he called them bones and the original instruments were pieces of bone. We now just play wooden ones. And the original bone ones go way, way back. They're among the oldest instruments that people ever played on the planet. And here's what they sound like. You can do a snap and a roll. Just that snap and the roll are the two main ingredients of the bones playing. But where it gets interesting is that you can do that snap and that roll very quickly and very slowly. You can do it very quietly, loudly, and everything in between. But where it starts to get really interesting is that anything you can do with this hand, you can also do with this hand. And eventually, you can do one thing with one hand, a different thing with the other hand at the same time. I've managed to figure out how to walk and talk at the same time. I still can't chew gum at the same time. Here we go. Mama, mama, have you heard? Mama, mama, have you heard? Papa's gonna buy you a mockingbird. Papa's gonna buy you a mockingbird. And if that mockingbird don't sing. And if that mockingbird don't sing. Papa's gonna buy you a diamond ring. Papa's gonna buy you a diamond ring. And if that diamond ring is brass. And if that diamond ring is brass. Papa's gonna buy you a looking glass. Papa's gonna buy you a looking glass. And if that looking glass gets broke. And if that looking glass gets broke. Papa's gonna buy you a billy goat. Papa's gonna buy you a billy goat. And if that Billy Goat don't fall, and if that Billy Goat don't fall, Papa's gonna buy you a cart and bowl. Papa's gonna buy you a cart and bowl. And if that cart and bowl turn over, and if that cart and bowl turn over, Papa's gonna buy you a dog named Rover. Papa's gonna buy you a dog named Rover. And if that dog named Rover don't bark, and if that dog named Rover don't bark, Papa's gonna buy you a horse and cart. Papa's gonna buy you a horse and cart. And if that horse and cart fall down, and if that horse and cart fall down. You still will be the sweetest little baby in town. So this is a diddly bow. And it's an ancient African-American instrument. This particular one was built for me by my son at the library in Ann Arbor. They had a workshop on how to build one of these. And Daniel learned how to do it and made this, made even some refinements to it. And he also got me a little amplifier because this is a quiet instrument. Now, it only has one string, but you don't play it like a guitar. You don't put your fingers on the string and press the fingers down. You get a glass tube or a metal tube and you slide on the string. So, the way you learn this instrument is the way you learn any other instrument by starting with a very simple melody that you all know. So as soon as you recognize it, you can sing along. It goes like this. just with things you find around the house, like a water bottle. You gotta drink what's in it, make sure that it's dry, then get a funnel. The reason for the funnel is so that you don't make a mess on the floor when you pour something into it. So I'm gonna get, what I have in here is rice, but you could use sand, pebbles, beans, anything like that and pour some in. 
it doesn't matter how much you pour in as long as you don't fill it up because what would happen if you filled it up? It wouldn't sound. It would be solid. So you put some in. You can shake it any which way, but if you hold it like this, you can really set up a good, solid, steady rhythm. So then you could use a water bottle. You could use any kind of tin can. Just tape it up to make sure that it doesn't come out. You can have one neat hand. You could use two scoops that you tape together with something rattling around on the inside. You can use any little container, like this is an old film canister, which your parents will know about, or grandparents maybe. And you can decorate it. You could put paper on it. You could attach ribbons. You could draw on it. You could write your name on it. All sorts of ways to make it your own. And then, holding one in each hand, you can sing a song while you keep the rhythm, like this. Hey, hey, skip to my loo. Hey, hey, skip to my loo. Hey, hey, skip to my loo. Skip to my loo, my darling. Little red wagon painted blue. Little red wagon painted blue. Little red wagon painted blue. Skip to my loo, my darling. Hey, 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 skip to my loo. Hey, hey, skip to my loo. Hey, hey, skip to my loo. Skip to my loo, my darling. I'll get another one quicker than you. I'll get another one quicker than you. I'll get another one quicker than you. Skip to my loo, my darling. Hey, hey, hey. Skip to my loo. Hey, hey. Skip to my loo. Hey, hey. Skip to my loo. Skip to my loo, my darling. Hey, 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 hey. Skip to my loo. Hey, hey. Skip to my loo. Hey, hey. Skip to my loo. Get to my loo, my darling. Very good. So we have a story for you now. This story is about a little girl. Well, not so little, but a little girl. Thank you. And her dad. And uh, so this little girl would come home from school every day. And she would take out this fiddle that she had. And this fiddle, as you'll notice, only has one string. And she would take the fiddle, she'd sit out on the front porch, put the fiddle up to her chin, put one finger down, always the same finger, always on the same spot on the fiddle, and she would play one note, always the same note, over and over and over. And people liked it well enough, her dad liked it, and everybody in the village liked it, and it's enough. It was, the, it was the only music in town. They had nothing to compare it to. So this went on like this for a long time until one day her dad went off to the big city. He went up to the big city and he heard an orchestra. They'd never, he'd never heard an orchestra before. And in the orchestra, there were fiddles and they had four strings on their violins. They had four strings and not only that, they played up and down the neck of the violin. They played so many notes. It was so beautiful. Wow, it was wonderful. He loved it. He couldn't wait to come home and tell his daughter, daughter? You won't believe what I heard when I went to the big, in the big city. I mean, there was an orchestra. They had violins that had four strings. Those four strings, they used every one of them. They played up and down. They used all of their fingers, not just one. It was wonderful. You should try it. You should really do that. Well, but Dad, they're just searching for the one right note. Mm -hmm. I already found it. next song? Our next song is, it's a old folk song, folk tune, yes. called the Arkansas Traveler. Oh yes, this is a story also. The Arkansas Traveler, this is a story uh, or, uh, about uh, a city slicker, and that's me, mm -hmm. and a country yokel, 
who turns out to be quite a bit smarter than the city slicker. Mm -hmm. So here's how it goes. And normally this has another tune that goes with it, but I learned, we learned this song when I was just eight years old and just starting to play the violin. And since I definitely couldn't play the other tune that mm -hmm. goes with this song, we, uh, we took a tune that I was learning at the time and substituted it in. So that one, that tune is called Allegro. So this story starts out like this. Hello, oh. stranger. Whoa, hello, stranger. Stranger, does this road go all the way to Ann Arbor? Well, I've been standing here all day and it hasn't gone nowhere yet. Hmm. Stranger, your corn is little and yellow. How come? Well, I planted the little yellow kind. Hello, stranger. Well, hi, stranger. Your roof is leaky. Why don't you fix it? Well, right now it's raining too hard. And when the sun's a shining, why it don't leak? Stranger, have you lived here all your life? Not yet. Since we're in the library, we have to sing a book. Who knows this book? Pete the Cat. Pete the Cat was walking down the street in his brand new white shoes. He loved his white shoes so much, he sang this song. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. Sing that with me. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. Oh no! Pete stepped in a large pile of strawberries. And what color did they turn his shoes? Red. Did Pete cry? Goodness no. He just kept walking along, singing his song. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. Sing that with me. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. Oh no! Pete stepped in a large pile of blueberries. And what color did they turn his shoes? Blue. Did Pete cry? Goodness no. He just kept walking along, singing his song. I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. Oh no! Pete stepped in a large puddle of mud. What color did it turn his shoes? Brown. Did Pete cry? Goodness no! He kept walking along, singing his song. I love my brown shoes. I love my brown shoes. I love my brown shoes. Oh no! Pete stepped in a bucket of water and all the brown and all the blue and all the red were washed away. What color were his shoes again? White. But now, they were also wet. Did Pete cry? Goodness no! He kept walking along and singing his song. I love my wet shoes. I love my wet shoes. I love my wet shoes. The moral of Pete's story is, no matter what you step in, keep walking along and singing your songs because... 
Because it's all good. Because it's all good. Because it's all good. Sing that with me. Because it's all good. Because it's all good. Because it's all good. Very good. One more Pete the Cat book. This one is called Pete the Cat and His Four Groovy Buttons. Pete the Cat put on his favorite shirt with four big, colorful, round, groovy buttons. He loved his buttons so much, he sang this song. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons, my buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. Sing that with me. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons, my buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. Pop! Oh no! One of the buttons popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Three, because four minus one equals three. Did Pete cry? Goodness no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. Pop! Oh no! Another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Two. Did Pete cry? Goodness no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. Pop! Oh no! Another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? One. Did Pete cry? Goodness no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song, but this time he sang My button, my button, my one groovy button My button, my button, my one groovy button Pop! Oh no! The last button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Zero. Did Pete cry? Goodness no! Buttons come and buttons go. Pete looked down at his buttonless shirt, and what do you think he saw? His belly button! And he kept on singing his song. My button, my button, still have my belly button. My button, my button, still have my belly button. I guess it simply goes to show that stuff will come and stuff will go, but do we cry? Goodness, no. We just keep on singing our song, and this time we sing. Buttons come and buttons go, buttons come and buttons go, buttons come and buttons go, buttons come and buttons go. And that's the end of the book. So here's another story, and this one has two important words in it. It's got the word fortunately and the word unfortunately. Now, when I say the word fortunately, Emily and you are going to do what? Hooray! That's right. And when I say unfortunately, Emily and you will... Oh, no. So fortunately, one day, Ned was invited to a birthday party. Hooray! Unfortunately, the party was far away. Oh, no. Fortunately, a friend loaned him an airplane. Hooray! Unfortunately, as he was flying along, the plane's engine stopped working. Oh, no. Fortunately, there was a parachute on board. Hooray! Unfortunately, there was a hole in the parachute. Oh, no. Fortunately, there was a haystack on the ground below him. Hooray! Unfortunately, there was a pitchfork with its tines sticking straight up out of the haystack. Oh, no. Fortunately, he missed the pitchfork. Hooray! Unfortunately, he also missed the haystack. Oh, no. Fortunately, he landed in some water. Hooray! 
Unfortunately, there were some sharks in the water. Oh no! Fortunately, he could swim very, very fast to get away from the sharks. Hooray! Unfortunately, there were some tigers on the shore. Oh no! Fortunately, he could run very, very fast to get away from the tigers. Hooray! Unfortunately, he ran into a deep, dark cave. Oh no! But when he dug himself out of the deep, dark cave, he found himself right here among all his friends. Hooray! Yay! So we have another story now. This one is one that we learned, my brother and I learned as little kids in Budapest, Hungary, where we were born. And our parents told it to us, of course, in Hungarian, but last translated it into English so we could tell it to you. Once upon a time in a village far away, there lived a poor farmer on a tiny farm. He had a few animals like you usually find on a farm, cats and dogs, cows, horse, sheep, goats, and chickens. He also had one very special rooster. One day, this rooster was out in the yard and he's pecking away when he found a beautiful silver dollar. He pecked all around it, took, picked it up. It was holding it up, it was shining in the sun like that, when all of a sudden, Mr. Stingy Man came riding down the road. Now, Mr. Stingy Man had lots and lots of money. He had a vault made of stone and steel that was 20 feet high, 20 feet wide, 20 feet long, was full of his money, but he was so stingy, he was so greedy, he always wanted more. So when he saw the silver dollar, he wanted it. He said, hey rooster, give me that silver dollar. Rooster said, no I won't, I'm taking it back to the farmer. No you won't, said Mr. Stingy Man, and he grabbed the rooster, yanked the silver dollar away from him, jumped in his car and drove off. When he got home, he just threw it in that silver dollar in his money vault and locked the door. The rooster didn't like this one bit. He went over to Mr. Stingy Man's house, got up on the windowsill and started singing at the top of his lungs. Hey, Mr. Stingy Man, listen to me holler. cock a doodle doodle do give me back my dollar. Sing it with us. Hey, Mr. Stingy Man, listen to me holler. cock a doodle doodle do give me back my dollar. He kept singing that over and over and over and over and over and over again. Mr. Stingy Man got real tired of it and called his son, whose name was Tightwad. And he said, Tightwad, take that rooster and throw him in the well. So Tightwad grabbed the rooster, threw him in the well. But the little rooster wasn't frightened. He just started singing to his belly. Belly, 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 taking all the water. Belly, 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 taking all the water. Glug, 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 And he took in all the water. Then he climbed out of the well, jumped up on the windowsill, and started singing at the top of his lungs. Hey, Mr. Stingy Man, listen to me holler. Cock a doodle doodle do, give me back my dollar. Hey, Mr. Stingy Man, listen to me holler. Cock a doodle doodle do, give me back my dollar. Now, Mr. Stingy Man was madder than before. He said, Tight Rod, take that rooster and throw him in the flaming furnace. Tight Rod grabbed the rooster and threw him in the flaming furnace. But the little rooster still wasn't frightened. He just started singing to his belly again. Belly, 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 let out all the water. Belly, 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 let out all the water. Whoosh! And the water put out the fire. Then the little rooster climbed out of the furnace, jumped up on the windowsill, and started singing at the top of his lungs. Hey, Mr. Stingy Man, listen to me holler. Cock a doodle doodle do, give me back my dollar. Hey, Mr. Stingy Man, listen to me holler. Cock a doodle doodle do, give me back my dollar. Now, Mr. Stingy Man was furious. He said, Take, on, take that rooster and throw him in the beehive. Take one, grabbed the rooster, threw him in the beehive. But the little rooster still wasn't frightened. He just started singing to his belly again. Belly, 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 taking all the bees. Belly, 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 taking all the bees. Bzzz. And he took in all the bees. Then he climbed out of the beehive, jumped up on the windowsill, and started singing at the top, top of his lungs. 
Hey, Mr. Stingy Man, listen to me holler. Kaka doodle doodle doo, give me back my dollar. Hey, Mr. Stingy Man, listen to me holler. Kaka doodle doodle doo, give me back my dollar. Now, Mr. Stingy Man was just about as mad as he could be. He said, Tight Red, you bring me that rooster. I'm going to stuff him in my baggy pants and I'll sit on him. Ooh, Tight Red bought three straw to Mr. Stingy Man, stuffed him in his baggy pants, and sat it on him. But the little rooster still wasn't frightened. He just started singing to his belly again. Belly, 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 let out all the bees. Belly, 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 let out all the bees. A bzzz. And the bees all came buzzing out and started biting Mr. Stingy Man. Ouch, 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 and finally he said, Tightwad, take that rooster over to the much vault and let it take us a little lousy silver dollar. So Tightwad grabbed the rooster, took him to the, uh, to the vault, opened the door, and let him see what was in there. Well, the little rooster took a long look. He took a long look. He took a deep breath and then he took a long Taking all the money, belly, 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 taking all the money. Click, 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 and he took it all the money. Then he climbed out of the wall, ran home, and gave all that money to the poor farmer. And you know what? They lived happily ever after. The chorus of the song says, don't forget to sing, don't forget to sing. No matter what is happening, don't forget to sing. Don't forget to sing, don't forget to sing, no matter what is happening, don't forget to sing, don't forget to sing, don't forget to sing, no matter what is happening, don't forget to sing. Try that with me.
last week. This world is your world. This world is my world. From the furthest nation to the end of our earth. From the highest mountain to the deepest ocean.